Hi guys, James Whittemore here at Wellenborough Golf Club and today I'm going to talk to you about practice sessions. How effective is your range session? Do you have a plan in place? Do you go there with a purpose or is it a case of we go there, we hit some balls, we take a couple of clubs, we chat to a buddy, hit the balls and then we leave. If you are the latter, uh, hopefully by the end of this video I would have given you some methods on practicing with a purpose, having a bit of structure to your practice sessions and making the practice session a bit more game related. Okay, let's get stuck into this video and let's see what we can do. Okay, so when we're at the range, the typical type of range session that I will tend to see the first one being is I like to call them a bit of a machine gun style session where I'll get a massive basket of balls and I'll start slowly warming up, you know, hitting a few wedges, a few irons, everything else. And before you know it, I'm straight onto the driver because I'm a bit bored of hitting them irons. So I'm hitting my driver. Then I, by the end of that, I then maybe drop down to a few more wedges and that's it. Range session is over. The other type of um, player we tend to see at the range is someone that is working on uh, a certain aspect in their game. So whether that is swing related, grip related, whatever it might be, they're focusing on that change, which is great, by the way. That's where it's perfect to, to work on these things at the driving range. Again, I just feel like we can have a bit more structure to this that's going to be a bit more beneficial as opposed to getting so engrossed in what's going on because you'll tend to see that they'll get a massive basket of balls and if it doesn't go to plan, they're just hitting the same club and you're getting more and more annoyed and you're pounding away, you hit ball after ball after ball. Before you know it, you're sweating buckets, you're getting more and more frustrated. You're on your third basket now and you probably walk away more annoyed than you are pleased because you start questioning in everything about are you doing it right? Are you working on the right things? All sorts of thoughts pop into the mind. Okay, so first things first, when we go to the range, what I want you to try and adopt instantly is get an idea on target. Now, this can be, regardless of level of golfer, whether you're a beginner, intermediate or advanced, sometimes we just get a bit sloppy, um, especially when we're hit, we are on the range and we're in a fixed position and we're hitting ball after ball after ball. It's very easy to get out of line. So what we can do, create a little setup like I've done here. I've got two alignment sticks. Uh, if you haven't got some alignment sticks, you can use clubs, obviously. You can use clubs or you can pick some up online at your local club shop. First one that's running parallel to my intended target line. Uh, so that's for my feet. And this one here is in the middle of my stance at the minute because I've got a seven iron in my hand. So it's basically, it's gonna give me an idea on ball position. And it's a, just a visual really. So again, because it's a fixed spot, the range, what I want to do, I just want to kind of leave these sticks where they are. And if I change my club, instead of me thinking I have to move or anything else, I'm not really sure. All I do, boom, I've used, I can use the visual. There we go. I can now put that alignment stick just inside my left heel, being a right-handed golfer. That's towards the front of my stance. And there's my setup ready for my driver. So again, just as a visual, and again, like I say, because we can get sloppy, it's very easy to do such thing. Plunk these sticks down, get yourself set, and you'll be in a much better position, sort of fundamentally with your golf ready to go. So we've got our alignment sticks down, uh, we've aligned ourselves to our intended target, and what's the plan? What I would say uh, is have a plan in your mind before you actually go to the range. So what I mean by that is you're driving up to the range, how many balls are you gonna get? So let's just say, for example, you get a basket of 50 balls. Plan in your head or write it down how many balls you're going to hit with each club. You go 10 with a wedge, 10 with an 8 iron, 10 with a 5 iron, 10 with a hybrid, 10 with a driver. You hit that sort of amount of shots and you leave because the reason I say that again is we have the one more syndrome. You know, <laughs> you might be standing there, you're hitting shots, it doesn't go to plan, one more. I'll hit one more, I'll hit one more, I'll go get another basket, I'll hit one more. And again, before you know it, like I say, you get yourself in a bit of a muddle. So initially have a plan, have a bit of structure to your actual session. That's the first thing I would say. The second thing is you hear a lot about people saying, 
when they first go to the range, what club do I start with? What club should I use? Now, obviously, if you're uh, a, very, a novice of the game, I wouldn't say go pick up a three iron, a four iron or anything like that. But, you know, we tend to see people starting with a seven iron, for example. We see that in golf lessons as well. Again, I'm not against this. I just don't think you need to necessarily start with a seven iron. Start with what you want. Uh, again, as long as you've got that structure and you're in, in place and you're ready to go, it doesn't really matter what club you start with. So we've got our plan in place. Uh, we've got our kind of our structure and what we're set out to do on the range. Now we're talking about making it game related. Let's just say you're, a, you're comfortable with what you're doing, how you're hitting the ball. Um, I would say then start to look at targets, for example. So obviously the range is littered with 150 yard posts, 200 yard posts, flags, short areas. I would say start looking out on the range. Uh, let's just take this game you can do with your driver. So I like this one. I think I, I try and do this. This is quite cool. Uh, you pick out a target in the distance for about 20 yards apart and you use that sort of 20 yard gap as your fairway. Now, you then hit, you then give yourself 10 balls with the driver, okay? So you've got 10 shots with the driver and you uh, state this in your mind before you start this little game is that if you miss the target, the 20 yard gap left, that's your miss, that's your safe side. So that's zero points. If you miss it right, it's dead. Let's say right is out of bounds, minus five. If you hit it, down the runway, down the middle, that's five points. So you have a bit of a scoring system. So obviously the objective at the end of your 10 balls is to be in the plus. If you're in the minus, then you know that's obviously a weakness and you need to work on it. And again, you can do that with any of your clubs. You can do it with your wedges. You can pick one of the flags out. In your mind, you can draw a little area of how, how wide the green is or a 10 foot radius, anything like that. And again, do the same sort of scoring system. A cool thing you can do when you're on the range is try and play a hole. So again, um, again, I keep using these words, game related, practice with a purpose, but again, this is perfect. So start on a hole, get a hole at your golf club in your mind. Uh, I'm going to stand on the first or the fourth, wherever that might be. Uh, I've got my first tee shot driver. So hit driver, hit it. You see where you've hit it to down the range again, pick your little target, make you pick your fairway out there in your mind, hit that shot. Next one, right, where have you hit your tee shot to? Oh, I've missed it left. I've got to punch out with a five iron, punch out back in play. Then I've got a wedge onto the green, hit the wedge onto the green. Again, make it game related, make it consequential that you can trust this and you can do this. And it, like I say, this will help you when you get out on the golf course, as opposed to just standing there, whacking balls, on repeat until your hands are bleeding and you, like I say, you walk away and you haven't, really, uh, you haven't really achieved anything. Last one I would say is time. Give yourself time. So regardless of whether you've got 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour and a half, whatever that might be, is again, plan that session because again, we're all guilty of it. We go up there, oh, I've got to get back in half an hour. I'll hit a quick basket, off I go. That's fine if you've got 30 minutes don't get huge, but don't get 120 golf balls and rush your way through them. Get a very small basket and take your time. And one thing I would say as well is when you are hitting balls and you're, and you're going through your structure of your shots, say you're on ball six with the seven iron, it doesn't have to be one after the other. So it doesn't have to be bang, put it down, hit the shot, have a break, stand behind the ball, have a little look at the target again, reset yourself, go through that routine. Think about it is what you're trying to do with that shot. It doesn't have to be just on repeat because you wouldn't play golf like that. You hit a shot, you walk, you then reset yourself, you go for it again, make it game related. Make it so it's gonna help you, not hinder you when you get out on the golf course. Okay guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully that video has given you a bit more of an insight into how to structure your practice sessions a little bit more effectively. And hopefully next time you're out on the golf course, you can then use what you've done in the range sessions to much better effect as opposed to just going up there and like I say going through the motions. Uh, if you uh, liked what you see leave a comment below, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel to see more content coming very soon. Thanks very much guys.